Hello and welcome back to the Equine Science Talk International podcast channel. I'm Kate Farmer. Today we're looking at a recent discovery that could impact the way all of us behave around our horses. It's been found that horses adjust their behaviour according to the behaviour they see in the people around them. So, if you're having an argument with someone, your horse is likely to avoid the place where he saw that happening. Similarly, if you're having a friendly, enjoyable conversation, maybe sharing a snack while you're chatting, your horse is likely to find that location attractive and relaxing. So, as the title of this podcast suggests, not in front of the horses. If you're having a disagreement that might get animated, do it well away from your horse. To find out how this was discovered and what it could mean for our everyday handling and training, I'm joined by Constanze Kruger, Professor of Equine Management at Nürtingen and Geislingen University in Germany and lead author of the study on so-called eavesdropping in horses. Hi Constanze, thank you for finding time for us today. Hello Kate, I'm happy to be with you again. So let's get straight into this. What gave you the idea to investigate this as a topic? Well, actually, a student came up to me and visited me and said she would be interested whether horses actually observe interactions of persons and whether they would change their behavior depending on what they saw. So how did you set about investigating this? I mean, it's, it sounds great. It's an interesting topic, but quite difficult to research, I would have thought. How did you set about creating an experiment? Yeah, so we set up an experiment in which two person would interact over feeding bowls. So the first person would approach the bucket and would try to take some food out of the bowl. And a second person would then either display approval. She would say like, good, do it, you can eat it. Or she would display disapproval and just tell the person, no, no, don't eat this, go away. So we were interested whether the horse would finally also understand that one of the buckets would be bad or the horse shouldn't eat from this bucket and the other one would be fine. So for this, we also use buckets of different color. We use blue buckets and yellow buckets. So horses could really separate between the good and the bad bucket. And before starting, we tested whether the horse would have a preference for one of the buckets, for a blue or for a yellow bucket. And when we ran the test, the bucket it preferred before was then the disapproved bucket, so the bad bucket. And we were interested in the horse, whether he would change his choice. How did you choose the horses? Were there any particular criteria you were looking for? No, actually, in the beginning, no. Afterwards, we thought, well, maybe whether a horse would adapt to a person or to observing interactions between persons is affected by his social rank. And then we said, okay, it's great. If we have several horses that live in a social group, we could do some observations of social behavior and calculate a hierarchy between the horses. Maybe high-ranking horses would not adjust as well as low-ranking horses. And after completing the test, what did you find out? It was really, really interesting because we expected the social rank would have a really big impact on whether horses listen to or observe the interaction. It was actually not true. Neither the social rank nor the age or the sex of the horses had any effect on whether they would observe the, the interaction and would also adapt to it. But what was really interesting is the housing of the horses was important. So we did find a difference between horses kept in individual boxes or horses living in a social in a social group. The horses living in individual boxes did not adapt as well as horses living in a social environment. And why do you think that might be? Well, actually, Scientists in the area of social cognition would not be surprised at all because there's the social intelligence hypothesis telling us that animals living in a social environment really have much better options to really pick up social information, learn from social interactions, adapt to conflict, try to find a solution for conflict. So that's the first point that we would expect this socially kept animals, uh, also really training their mental abilities much more. And the second aspect is probably also that they have their interest in social interactions is much larger because they experience every day that social interaction is 
actually important for their life. So scanning interactions between other horses is normal for them. And then maybe it's also much more normal for them also scanning interactions between humans. So in a nutshell, what you found out was that particularly for the horses living in a social environment, they tended to avoid the place or the food, food bucket situation, where they'd seen a negative interaction between people, an angry interaction, and they chose the place where they'd seen the happy, friendly interaction. So how could this be applied in practice? Well, maybe if we use the same situation as in the test, it applies to feeding situations. So for example, if a horse um, would be integrated into a new stable system and he's a little bit tense and afraid about the feeding situation, maybe there is an automatic feeder or something or the feeding area seems to be suspicious. Um, we have to be aware that the horse does not only observe this the situation, other horses, but also us. So if we take someone else, another person into this feeding area and we start quarreling because it's like, oh, come on, everything is dirty here. And why did you put up this hay net or something like this? The horse would observe us and say, like, yes, I was right. This situation is suspicious. I will not go in there. And then on the other hand, if we would just be aware of this and just take another person there and say, come on, let's look at the feeding area and just, oh, this is nice. I would love to eat here. And this is a really good hay. Well, I'd love this and just sniff on the hay and maybe also eat a carrot or something like this. Then the horse would be interested and say, oh, come on, the, whole, the people are communicating very positive and seems to be a very, very nice place. Maybe I can try to eat there. I could actually back that up with my personal experience because I do a lot of problem loading horses. And I found that if the owner is in the trailer as well, if the owner is tense and they're saying to me, oh, this horse has always been a problem and it's so difficult at the shows, the horse won't go in. But if I've just got the horse on the rope and it's standing on the ramp and I say, oh, have you planned your holidays for this year yet? Where are you going? Oh, that sounds lovely. Oh, I'd love to go there. They relax. They talk about something else. And in a few minutes, the horse wanders in on its own. And this happens again and again. You've got to have a really calm, friendly atmosphere and the horse will want to come towards it. Now, where I've not tried it, I'd be interested in whether you think this would work. Would it work, for example, if you have a spooky area in the arena? I would expect it does. So actually, it's about calming yourself down. We know there is already signs on that horses adapt to heart rate of people they really in close contact with and they scan their op and their owners whether their tense their heart rate is up and they're stressed as well so they may also observe us when we are there with a second person and just behave calm in this area and and then also especially this area which seems to be a little bit dangerous in the riding arena before just stay there just take something to eat and to drink with you and have a nice chat with another person and then the horse may experience oh this corner maybe it's not so bad because my owner and also other persons they don't seem to be afraid of this corner be aware that the horse is always watching you. So we had always pub we had publications be before in which we proved that horses observe their owner individually. And now it's just one piece on top. We just show that they don't only observe their owners. They also observe the interaction of their owners with other persons. It's absolutely fascinating. Constanza, once again, thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Thank you very much, Kate.